Hey everybody, I've missed all of you. It's been a long time and I apologize. Um, I just really haven't been into the stories and the bullshit and the John Cena greatest champion in the whole wide world ever type stuff going on right now. So I apologize. I'm not really going to do a Raw review. I just want to kind of tell you some few things I thought about Raw and a few things about WWE in general, WWE in general. So, I apologize for my absence from the YWC, and for those of you who don't know me, my name is Sarah. Let's get started. Um, last night on Raw, Roman Reigns opened the show. He looked a little pale, like he was going to puke all over the ring or something. I don't know if it was just like the first alone, like, spotlight type moment he had. He did okay. Um, he doesn't talk as well as he looks, but I guess it evens out. Anyway, I don't know, like the crowd started chanting and it's like, what are they saying? Apparently they were saying Cena sucks because he said, damn right, Cena sucks when I'm around or some shit. It was a clever comeback, like acknowledge the crowd, but you couldn't, sorry, Oh, you couldn't understand what the crowd was saying. And I don't know if that was WWE, like, muffling the chants, or if I just can't understand French Canadians. Sorry, Wrestling Jesus. No offense. Anyway, he did okay, whatever. I like where they're going with his character. It's fine. I like everything about the shield. But somebody just needs to get that man some chapstick. Like... What, 90 cents a fucking tube? And then he'll quit licking his lips because it's awkward as shit. Anyway, I'm going to give you some feelings about Money in the Bank. Um, first of all, fuck John Cena. Like, everybody knows that. But I was okay. I didn't pay for it, clearly. But I was okay with Seth Rollins winning that briefcase, whatever. So, my problem is that they just keep teasing it. Like... Quit teasing the goddamn briefcase. Like, he's not going to fucking cash it in. It's not going to happen. You've got Dean Ambrose trying to like, keep him from cashing it in. Like, a multitude of other things. And you're trying to fucking pin Superman. Like, it's... it. No, just quit. Fucking quit. Plus, you've already distinguished who is going to be in the main event in the next pay-per-view. Do you think we're that fucking stupid that you're going to... Oh, God. Oh my god, it's ridiculous. Uh, I do like that Ambrose keeps interfering. I think it's kind of cool that they've continued the drama between them because it was a big deal. Um, let's see. My problem with the believability of this, and I know, like, why am I even talking about it? None of it's believable at all. But he has the briefcase. Like, why would... Sorry. Why would the authority not just be able to set it up for him to fucking take. Oh my god, why is the TV coming back on? Fucking ghosts. Sorry. My bad. Anyway, we are supposed to believe that the authority is like full of fucking power and can do everything, whatever. They helped him win the briefcase in the first place. Don't you think they could like hire people to come hold John Cena down or like fucking roofie his drink or some shit like it could clearly be done like he could clearly win and they could see to it so why isn't it happening i just <sighs> anyway then you make poor seth rollins say that john cena is the greatest of all time like you made that man say that shit like that is so degrading he's just you would make him say that when he grew up I know he's young, but he grew up, like, watching The Great. Okay. I don't know why they're prolonging the inevitable. Because they might as well just let Seth Rollins win. So that John Cena can beat him again in his rematch. With the rematch clause. And then he'll be a 16-time motherfucking world champion of whatever. And then he can be on WWE 2K16, too. Because we all know it's going to happen. 
Anyway, enough about that. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is this Fatal 4-Way match at What the Fuck Ever pay-per-view is next. What sense does it make to have these four people in this match? Like, okay, I get John Cena has the belt, so I guess he has to be in it, right? Randy Orton? Okay, like, Kane? Fuck you, really? Like, let him fucking job out and put people over and do what he's fucking supposed to do. He's not relevant. I get that you need, like, the authority muscle to help whoever win, but it's bullshit. You couldn't have thought of somebody a little bit fucking better? And then Roman Reigns. Like, okay, it's cool that you're teasing that he's going to be a champion. Like, yeah, he's awesome. People are behind him. But the four of them, it just doesn't make sense. Like, there's no such thing as a fucking number one contender anymore, apparently. Like, fuck that. Really? Anyway, another segment on Raw I want to talk about is the Bret Hart and Damian Sandow Hart, Sand Hart, whatever. Both those motherfuckers have a foot in the grave already. And I mean that Bret Hart looks terrible. I, he looks a little better than he did a couple years ago when he came back. But really, like, let him fucking retire. And you're going to bring him back and parade him around in Montreal, of all places? I get it. Like, he's a Canadian. Canadians love Bret Hart. Woohoo. But you fucked him over in that same city. And then make Damien Sandow reference it? It's humiliating. I don't understand what purpose that serves. I don't understand why he was there in the first place. He didn't do anything important. And then Sandow has got his foot in the fucking jobber grave already. Like, okay, you're an Indiana Pacer one night, and then you're fucking Abraham Lincoln, and you make a tacky-ass Abraham Lincoln getting assassinated joke. Fuck you, WWE. That's bullshit. Anyway, it's ridiculous. Both of them, just that whole segment, just, no, no more. It's over, done. Might as well just fucking paint Damien Sandow's face and he can be Doink 2.0. Ridiculous. The two things I do actually kind of enjoy right now and I'm looking forward to seeing, but I'm not looking too much forward to it because I know they're going to stomp all over my hopes that they'll be good. But I'm very excited about Jack Swagger and Rusev. I feel like they're actually doing this right for once. Like, they haven't really touched each other. There's tension. You've got two valets that are, like, speakers for the people. Like, it's... It could be awesome. Let it happen. Please let it happen. Just this once. Can we just... Just once. I also like Stardust, and I know all of you fucking hate it, but I think it's cool, and I think Cody Rhodes is way more comfortable as Stardust than he ever has been, whether he's had a bag on his head or plexiglass goggles or whatever. He's, it's cool. I like it. It's creepy. Mm-hmm. You should like it, too. My, one of my main problems with the product right now is that it just feels like it's the same shit. Like, you can watch one month and, like, skip two months and two pay-per-views and it's still the same people fighting each other. I know you fired a shit ton of people, but there's still enough people on the fucking roster that I shouldn't have to watch Del Rio and fucking Dolph Ziggler every motherfucking Monday night. Really? Like, who gives a shit? At least they still have jobs, I guess. I don't know. We also had to see the Usos and the Wyatts again. And at the end of that match, like, the Usos were like, Oh, you didn't pin the legal man. How can we fucking tell? You have the same goddamn tattoos, same shit on your face, the same hair. You look exactly the same. I don't know if they're going to, like, continue that into a storyline or if, like, they really did not pin the legal man. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I know. I know you all feel the same way, too. I'm just getting it out. Okay. I also get very irritated with Alicia Fox. You're not building a character. You're letting a girl go out there and act like a fucking crazy person. For no reason. And you wasted a fucking $5 can of Red Bull. Criminal. That's ridiculous. Why would you do that? You also tie 
Nikki Bella's hand behind her back and make her look like a defenseless little fucking deer or something. Don't hit me. I only have one hand. Bitch, that's all it takes to punch somebody in the face. <sighs> Divas, ridiculous. You also have Naomi and Cameron, like, getting all up in each other's faces. Like, we're gonna fucking fight. Just you wait and see. I don't know. They did dye um, Naomi's hair, whichever one's hair, so that you can better differentiate them, I guess. Like, the asses aren't different enough. Anyway, this is another reason, I think, why, like, Total Divas and all the Twitter and whatever kind of ruins the product. Because you know they're fucking best friends. If you watch Total Divas at all, I'm not, like, a super fan, but I've watched it a couple times. Like, they're friends. This is an act. You're splitting them up, them up and probably, more than likely, one or two of them are going to lose their job in the next year. Just like Santino. I guess he retired. I think they said, hey, do you want to get fired or do you want to go ahead and retire and keep your benefits? But Ryback really did get let go. Like, you, WWE, are the ones that fucked him over. You put him on top and you crushed him. It's not because it's not because he didn't get over. You didn't let him get over. Like, yeah, you, you brought him up a little bit from good old Skip Sheffield in his cowboy hat, but then you just we're done with you. You served your purpose. Like, I get it. It's a business that's they're supposed to serve their purpose. But poor guy. Like, at least he got to taste what it was like on the top. I don't know. Sorry, Skip. Sucks. I don't know what Curtis Axel's going to do. He'll probably get fired, too. So this is the main purpose of my video. And I'm sorry I got a little carried away there for a minute. But all night last night, and I got two text messages about it, the WWE is letting people use the network for free, no strings attached, no credit card required, for a week. Hmm, what's that mean? Well, I googled WWE Network, and the first thing that came up was an article from Business Insider that highlighted how terrible the WWE Network is doing. They were supposed, projected to have 2 million subscribers to the network by the end of the year, and they have 667,000 as of April. It's a big difference. If they don't increase their subscribers or membership, they're going to lose $50 million. Really? It also said in the article, and I don't know how valid this is, but it said that Vince McMahon lost one-third of his fortune in one day because of this. So maybe instead of thinking about what's best for business, they should be thinking about what's bad for business and that seems to be the WWE Network. And I don't have a business degree. And I'm not a wrestler. And I'm not a fucking CEO of a company. But when I have people spending $55 two to three to four times a year. And I offer them a chance to save that $50 to $60 pay-per-view. And give me $10 a month. I'm smart enough to know that I'm probably going to lose money. So same people that buy the pay-per-view and multiple pay-per-views of that are the same ones that are going to buy the network. You're not really getting anybody else to purchase it. They're the same people that would have bought pay-per-views anyway, which is ridiculous because for the price of two pay-per-views, you get every pay-per-view. I don't know. That's just my opinion. I also think they're trying to maybe, like, get the 30-something, 40-something-year-old people to buy the network by, like, promoting this Monday Night Wars show. It's a fucking DVD, and we bought it, like, six years ago, whenever it came out. It may have been longer than that. Like, it's not a special thing, and you're 
begging people to use your product to watch another company show their product. Like, isn't WCW stuff one of the most, like, popular thing to watch on the network? If you can't get people to watch your stuff, I get it, they own it, whatever. If you can't get people to watch your stuff, that's probably pretty telling as a business person. So, I don't know exactly. It was on Business Insider. I don't know how valid, like I said, the facts are. But I did sign up for the free trial, no strings attached, no credit card required, so that I could watch the Vicky Guerrero countdown whatever, Cougar countdown. I'm guilty. I wanted to watch it. It was really kind of funny, and it kind of makes you nostalgic for, like, when it was entertaining to watch. And I know I'm sitting here talking about it. I'm being hypocritical. I do watch it, but it's like every time, like, you get that glimmer of hope. Like, that little tiny star that's the brightness of wrestling in the fucking dark, terrible sky. It goes out. Like, they they ruin it. it. I don't understand. You've got these potentially great stories. Like, the S.H.I.E.L.D. guys splitting up. You've got Roman Reigns still coming into their music. Still wearing their outfits. Like, you're doing things in an entertaining, fun-to-watch way. But then you just let John Cena win again so you can put him on the cover of 2K15. Why? I don't... I guess so that little kids could buy a shirt. But we were watching the Vicky Guerrero thing. And there was a video clip. Oh, uh, Vicky was doing like a count or a dance-off or something. And we paused it. And there were like 37 red John Cena shirts in the audience. So clearly he's not even as popular as he once was. And they're having to blur out Cena sucks chants because they're so bad. There is one thing I'm really um, enjoying right now. And that's Bo Dallas. I think it's fucking hilarious. I think that it's the one thing that's like elevated beyond like just for children. It's kind of like sarcastic. I don't know. I like it. I'm a believer. I don't know. Let me know what you all think. Let me know what you think about my crazy um, rant for a few minutes. And let me know if you can think of anything you want me to talk about. Because it's so tedious to do a raw review. But I do want to continue to make videos. So, y'all have a nice day.